Sunday School here at the Ministries in Northern Pennsylvania. As we're uh, continuing our uh, study of the prophecies of the Bible, which have come to pass and uh, which have not yet come to pass. Uh, we are continuing in the uh, book of Jeremiah. Uh, we shall begin today in chapter 34. Chapter 34, uh, verse, starting in verse 2, uh, the word of the Lord has come to Jeremiah. It says, Behold, I will give this city, Jerusalem, into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And you, uh, King Zedekiah, will not escape out of his hand, but shall surely be taken and delivered into his hand. That's uh, Prophecy uh, 2106, which uh, did come to pass. Then we skip down to verses uh, 4 and 5, Prophecy 2107. It says, Yet hear the word of the Lord, O Zedekiah, king of Judah, that thou, thou shalt not die by the sword, but thou shalt die in peace, and with the burnings of thy fathers, the former kings, which were before thee, for they shall burn odors for thee. Uh, that most likely refers to the burning of incense. And um, they will let me say, Ah, Lord, for I have pronounced the word. So uh, Bab Babylon will be captured, and Zedekiah will be taken into captivity. However, he shall not be slain. Uh, he instead, he will... Uh, just die in captivity of natural causes, and there will be uh, mournings uh, for him as he passes. Uh, yes, God will allow him uh, that dignity. So those are prophecies 2106 and 07. Now, verses uh, 8 uh, through uh, 22. This uh, talks about a, a covenant that uh, King Zedekiah declared in Judah. He uh, made a covenant to uh, release uh, all Hebrew slaves. Um, his reasons uh, for doing so were of, were of selfish means. Uh, allow me to read you from this uh, Bible commentary. It says, uh, The covenant was entered in for their own advantage, and when it proved to be against them, they broke it. Nebuchadnezzar's siege against Jerusalem was on the ninth year of the reign of Zedekiah, who made the covenant with the people to let the Hebrew slaves go free. When the army came through the country, the wealthier people fled to Jerusalem with their households, and the presence of these families with slaves may have given offense to the stricter classes in the city, where the Mosaic law was probably observed more than elsewhere. Furthermore, it was hoped that the slaves being freed would help more heartily in resisting the enemy. In resisting the enemy, so the agreement was made to avert coming judgments. Now, it should be uh, it should be noted that uh, it wasn't necessary for um, Zedekiah to create this covenant because uh, they were already under obligation to release uh, all Hebrew slaves, all Hebrew slaves after uh, six years uh, of slavery. On the, se after, after, on the seventh year, they were to go free. If they wanted to uh, remain a slave uh, with their masters, they could. They'd be called bond servants. But if not, they were uh, free to um, start lives on their own again. Uh, however, this was not uh, something that uh, Israel was observing at the time. Uh, in fact, you'd be hard-pressed to find uh, parts of the covenant that they did faithfully observe. Thus, uh, thus the judgment. But in any case, um, Nebuchadnezzar's uh, armies first, um, first approached uh, Jerusalem. However, uh, at the time they did, uh, Pharaoh's uh, Egyptian armies also advanced on uh, Jerusalem to fight off Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar's armies retreated because of this uh, Egyptian advance. Uh, keep in mind, uh, 
and as Israel had uh, made uh, an agreement with Egypt in order in order for protection uh, again this too was an offense to God because they trusted in and they trusted in the Egyptian armies rather than God himself to protect them so in, in any case uh, once the uh, once Nebuchadnezzar's armies withdrew uh, Zedekiah and Judah broke the covenant and uh, took the slaves back into captivity. And thus, um, and thus we come to verse 17, where it says, uh, You have not hearkened unto me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother, and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I claim a liberty for you to the sword, the pestilence, and to the famine. I will make you be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. That's uh, Prophecy uh, 2108. Uh, removed into all the kingdoms of the earth, they be a means uh, a disgrace unto other nations. And uh, continuing on, and I will give the men that have transgressed my covenant, which have not uh, performed the words of the covenant, which they have made before me when they cut the calf in, in two and pass through the parts thereof. Now, Understand something. Um, in making a covenant, the uh, the ritual was to kill a cow or uh, some kind of animal and walk through it with a proclamation that if I don't keep my end of the covenant, I too should be cut in half, like the like this animal. And so, by breaking the covenant, uh, they uh, uh, all of uh, all of those who participated in the covenant, which uh, in nineteen says, the princes of Judah, the princes of Jerusalem, the eunuchs, and the priests, and all the people of the land which pass between the parts of the calf, uh, they will be subject to uh, the sword, thus being cut in half. God honors covenants, and he also honors the terms of when covenants are broken. That's uh, Prophecy 2108. Then it says, uh, verse 20, I will even give them into the hand of their enemies, and into them the hand of them that seek their life, and their dead bodies shall be meat unto the fowls for the heaven, and uh, to the beasts of the earth. And Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his princes, I will give into the hands of their enemies, and into the hand that seek their own life, and into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which are come upon you. That's uh, prophecy uh, 2109. So... Uh, their bodies are just going to be, are just going to be stacked up and left to rot for the uh, birds of prey to be eaten. And then verse 22, prophecy 21:10, Behold, I will command, saith the Lord, and cause them to return to this city, and they shall fight against it and take it. Uh, them, beating, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, the Babylonian army. They retreated after. Uh, after seeing Pharaoh's army uh, come to Jerusalem's defense, but this, but next time, but they will come again, and this time Pharaoh's army will not come to protect them. All right, chapter thirty-five. Uh, this chapter talks about uh, the Rechabites. Uh, the Rechabites were descendants of Hobab, the brother-in-law of Moses, a Kenite tribe who migrated with Israel to Canaan. Now, um, the uh, Rechabites uh, were not uh, dwellers in the uh, city of Jerusalem. They dwelt out in the desert, in the, wilder in the wilderness, in tents, because uh, that's what they were uh, commanded to do, according uh, to, their, uh, to their father, their founding father. Um, in uh, verse... Uh, <clears throat> In verse 2, uh, God tells uh, Jeremiah to uh, find the Rechabites. Uh, they, were currently, uh, they were currently staying in Jerusalem uh, at this time because of uh, the Syrian armies that were invading the wilderness. They just wanted to get away from those armies. So they were staying in Jerusalem until everything passed. Jeremiah invites them into the temple of the Lord. He offers them wine, and uh, the Rechabites to refuse to drink it because uh, they were commanded to do so, where it says, verse 6, But they said, We will drink no wine, for Jonadab 
the son of Rechab, our father, command us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye your sons forever. So they were honoring uh, the command of their ancestors. Uh, other commands uh, from uh, Jonadab, where they were to uh, build no houses, sow no seed, plant any vineyards, own any vineyards, but, in, but dwell in tents all the days. And they were uh, being faithful and obedient uh, to this uh, command uh, from their ancestors. Which then takes us to uh, verses uh, 16 through 19. Um, God is saying that uh, here the Rechabites, they're being faithful to the commands of their human ancestor, whereas Judah and Jerusalem refuse to be faithful to the commands of God himself. So, uh, in verses 16 and 17, God is saying uh, because of this, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken unto them, but they have not heard, and I have called unto them, but they have not answered. That's prophecy 21.11. Then, then we have 21.12. It says, um, Jeremiah said unto the house of Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord, because you have obeyed the commandment, commandment of Jonadab your father and kept all his precepts and done according unto all that he has commanded you to do. Therefore Jonadab the son of Rechab shall not want a man to stand with me forever. So he's uh, from God is promising protection uh, over the Rechabites and uh, and assuring them that their, li that their lineage uh, will carry on. Now I should point out this is uh, this is conditional that all future generations adhere to the uh, commandments of uh, Jonadab. Whether they whether they did so or not, I don't know. I'm honestly not aware if the Rechabites are still with us uh, today, so I honestly don't know. Okay, chapter thirty six. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Je <clears throat> Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah. Now, um, Jehoiakim's reign actually preceded Zedekiah's, so uh, Jeremiah, as we can tell, is not written in chronological order. Why this is so, I have no idea, but it is what it is, so we just have to uh, deal with it. In any case... Um, Jeremiah was commanded by God to uh, write down all the prophecies against Israel, Judah, and Jerusalem, going back from well, going back from to the days of Josiah up until present day, and then Jeremiah was to read all these prophecies uh, to King Jehoiakim, uh, so that um, he and the nations uh, may repent to avoid the uh, upcoming judgment. Uh, Jeremiah was in prison at this time, so uh, his servant Baruch um, wrote on a scroll everything uh, Jeremiah dictated to him, which uh, came from God himself. Um, Baruch uh, read it to uh, some of the um, city officials, and then the scroll was read to uh, Jehoiakim, and uh, Jehoiakim didn't care for what was written, so he had the scroll burnt. And, um, and, uh, and the consequences uh, come in verses uh, 27 through 32. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after the king burned the, burned the scroll, and the words which Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, Thou hast burned the scroll. Why hast thou burned, why hast thou written therein, saying, The king of Babylon shall certainly come and destroy this land, and shall cause to cease uh, from thence men and beasts? Prophecy 21, 13, verse, then verse 30. Therefore, as thus saith the Lord, He shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out into the day to the heat, and then in the night of the frost, 2114, so um, not only would Jehoiakim uh, be killed 
at the uh, hands of Babylon. Uh, he would have uh, no future heir on the throne of David. And then uh, verse 31, I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity, and I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the men of Judah all the evil that I have pronounced against them, but they hearken not. Now, so, um, you know, God uh, told Jeremiah to have the uh, scroll of past uh, prophecies and promises of uh, judgment read in the hopes they would repent. They did not, and so uh, God would proceed with everything he said. That's uh, prophecy 21.15 again. Okay, chapter uh, 37. Um, this uh, talks about uh, what I mentioned earlier about Egypt uh, coming to the defense of uh, Judah to, uh, to fight off uh, Nebuchadnezzar's army and the armies retreated and then Pharaoh's armies retreated, retreated. So then it says in verse uh, 7, Thus saying uh, the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus shall you say to the king of Judah that sent you unto me to inquire of me, Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come forth to help you, shall return into to Egypt, into their own land. And the Chaldeans, or Babylonians, shall come again and fight against the city and take it and burn it with fire. Prophecy uh, 21.16, uh, verses uh, 9 and 10. Thus saith the Lord, Deceive not yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they uh, shall not depart. For, the, for though ye had smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there remain but wounded men among them, yet shall there rise up every man in his tent and burn this city with fire. Prophecy 21.17 So God is saying, uh, Don't bother having any wishful thinking. Of, um, of Nebuchadnezzar's army not returning, because they will. And when they come the second time, they will uh, take Jerusalem and burn it with fire. Again, that's prophecy uh, 21, uh, 17. Then we turn to, um, then we turn to uh, verse 17. Um, Zedekiah had just uh, released uh, Jeremiah from prison. Um, Zedekiah wants to hear anything new uh, from the prophets that God has to say. And um, verse 17, Is there any word from the Lord? And Jeremiah said, There is. For he said, Thou shalt be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. It's more or less the same thing he's been saying over and over and over again. Uh, apparently, I guess Zedekiah is just hoping things would change, but uh, without repentance, uh, things aren't going to change. So that's prophecy twenty-one eighteen. Chapter thirty-eight, verse two. Thus saith the Lord, He that remains in this city, Jerusalem, shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. That he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have his life for a prey, and shall live. The city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Prophecy 21.19 Again, a uh, prophecy regarding to the handing over the city of Jerusalem to Babylon. And God says, anyone who, who surrenders to uh, Nebuchadnezzar, they shall live. And meaning, meaning uh, anyone who doesn't surrender uh, to the Babylonian army, tries to fight them, they shall die. Uh, next prophecy, uh, starting in verse uh, 17. Then said Jeremiah unto Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, that thou wilt assuredly go forth unto the king of Babylon's princes, and they 
Then thy soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire. Thou shalt live in thine house. But if thou wilt not go forth uh, to the king of Babylon's princes, then the city shall be given into the hands of Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and uh, thou shalt not escape uh, out of their hand. Uh, apparently, that's something, apparently, uh, Zedekiah did not give himself over to uh, the Babylonians, because um, the city was destroyed by fire. <clears throat> Okay, then down in verse 20, Jeremiah says, They shall not, uh, wait, in verse 19, uh, Zedekiah says unto Jeremiah, I'm afraid that the Jews, I'm afraid of the Jews that are fallen to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand, and they mock me. So, he's uh, afraid of the backlash uh, he'd get from the Jews if he just uh, handed himself over. Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee, obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord, which I speak unto thee, so it shall be well unto thee, and thy soul shall live. But if thou refuse to go forth, this is the word that the Lord hath shown me. And behold, all the women that are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of, the, of Babylon's princes, and those women shall say, Thy friends have set thee and have prevailed against thee. Thy feet are sunk in the mire, and they are turned away. So they shall bring out all thy wives and thy children to the Chaldeans, and thou shalt not escape of their hand, but thou shalt be taken by the hand, the king of Babylon, and thou shalt cause the city to be burned with fire. That's prophecy uh, 21, 21. So, you know, apparently uh, the women of the house of Judah are just going to... Um, well, they're just going to be um, lament uh, Zedekiah. Most likely say, poor, poor Zedekiah. Thy friends have set thee on and have prevailed against thee. Thy feet are stuck in the mire and they are turned away. That's basically they'll just be singing a song of pity for uh, Zedekiah. Okay, okay chapter uh, 39. here, um, uh, starting in uh, verse 15, uh, Jeremiah has a uh, prophecy for, um, for Abed-Melech, Ed Ed uh, the Ethiopian, starting in verse 16. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring my words upon this city for evil and not for good and they shall be accomplished in that day before thee but I will deliver thee in that day saith the Lord and thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men who, who are afraid or, okay, so um, God is specifically speaking to Abimelech he, said, he says even though this city uh, shall, be, uh, shall be taken and even though evil is going to uh, befall it, you, Abedmelech, Abed uh, will be spared. Uh, you shall not be given into the uh, hand of man whom, whom thou art afraid. So he will escape a uh, free man. Then, uh, then it goes on to further say, For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not by the sword... But thy life shall be a prey unto thee, for thou hast put my trust in me. Now, uh, what's interesting to point out, uh, this is an Ethiopian. Uh, he is a Gentile. He is not a Hebrew. But he is, uh, he is receiving uh, protection and deliverance from the Lord because uh, he's putting his trust in. Uh, again, this is a, a case of where a Gentile um, <coughs> can indeed uh, believe upon uh, the Lord God of Israel, and the Lord God of Israel uh, honors that, and he uh, brings him into the family. Uh, we see it a handful of times throughout the New Testament. I believe the first example was Ruth, the 
Moabite, who actually became part of the Messiah's lineage, and, um, and Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, he too, um, I mean, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was uh, called a servant of God, even though he didn't know it at the time. Uh, God, uh, yeah, God uh, worked through a lot of Gentiles, and uh, Nebuchadnezzar actually uh, became a servant of God. Uh, an example of that, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, you know, started to boast to his entire kingdom about all the conquests that he'd done and the kingdom he'd built, uh, God didn't strike him dead. He, <coughs> he simply chastened him. He uh, caused him to lose his mind uh, for seven years. And when he came back into his right mind, uh, he repented and uh, he understood uh, what was done for him. All right, well, uh, that brings us to the end of another episode. Uh, thank you uh, for joining us. We shall uh, continue. And...